Hello everyone, it's Becca from Becca Books and Bujo, and today I will be tier ranking all of Kristen Hanna's books. This video has been a long time coming because I set out to read all of Kristen Hanna's books in the summer of 2022, and here we are, almost two years later. But I have read every single book written by Kristen Hanna, almost. <laughs> I'll talk about that in a second. But I am now going to tier rank them, and I'm so excited. Kristen Hanna is one of my favorite authors. Her books are written so wonderfully. You care about the characters, and she has great stories. Some of them are cliche, but we'll also talk about that too. So uh, let's first talk about how I will be tier ranking them. If you've been a part of my channel for any amount of time, you will know that I love a book that makes me cry. And a lot of Kristen Hanna's books make me cry. So we're going to do it by amount of tears shed. <laughs> so the top tier, the best tier, is I Bawled My Eyes Out. <laughs> These are the best Kristen Hanna books in my opinion. I actually did sob during them, and so those books will be placed in that tier. The next one is that I shed a tear. I did indeed cry, maybe, but it wasn't like all out sobbing. So that's the second tear. Third tier is my eyes welled up. No tears were actually shed, but it was a pretty decent book. Next one is Dry Eyes. This is a book that I did not like. No tears were shed. Didn't enjoy the story. Didn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. And the next one, next category is did I even read this? Because there are some that I was like, I don't remember this book. So uh, those might go in that category. There are also a few that will go in that category that I actually haven't read because it's just not possible for me. So let's start. We are going to go in publication order. So we will start with the earliest of Kristen Hanna's releases. Her first book that ever came out was in 1991, and it was called A Handful of Heaven. Now, could I find this book anywhere to read? No. <laughs> it is out of print. I don't think I could find it on any ebook. So this one, my first one, is actually going to have to go in Did I Even Read This? Because I didn't read this. And there are maybe five out of the 25 books that she has ever published that I have not read because they are out of print. I couldn't find them anywhere. I search for them in any sort of library sale or used bookstore that I go to because you never know if you're going to find them, but I just couldn't find some of them. So that's where A Handful of Heaven goes, unfortunately. Also, the next one is called The Enchantment. It came out in 1992, and I didn't read it. I <laughs> didn't actually read it. Uh, okay, and same goes with Once in Every Life. This came out in 1992, and didn't even read it. Okay, now we're on the first book that I actually read. If You Believe came out in 1993, and it is a romance. Believe it or not, Kristen Hanna can write some steamy romance. There are some scenes in here that maybe you would flip through if you don't like that kind of a romance. But um, I actually really enjoyed it. I thought I wouldn't like her earlier books that were published, but I enjoyed it. I think I gave it four stars. This is about a woman who has lived on her parents' farm with her parents her entire life. And when a gentleman shows up looking for work, romance ensues. So, um... I think I'm going to put this in Shed a Tear. I maybe did actually cry um, because there are some times when our main character finally grapples with the grief that has kept her on this farm. And so, yeah, I'm putting it in Shed a Tear. When Lightning Strikes. Again, didn't read it. It came out in 1994. And the last one that I didn't read is Waiting for the Moon. Came out in 1995. If you have any tips or tricks on how to find these five books here at the bottom, let me know because I would like to read them. They are out of the library system, nowhere to be found. So let me know if you've read any of them. That'd be cool. Okay, now we are getting to books that I've actually read. 
coming out in 1996, we have Home Again, and this is actually the most recent Kristen Hanna I have read. I just completed it this month. Um, it's a little cliche, but it's still good. This is about a movie star in need of a heart transplant, and in order to get the best care possible, he goes to the best transplant center in the United States, which happens to be at his hometown. And so he is having to deal with some history that he left behind in his hometown of Seattle and uh, also try to get a heart transplant and yada yada. His high school romance comes back into the picture and yeah, like I said, cliche. There were some things that I could tell were coming, especially with the heart transplant issue, but um, I'm going to put this in Eyes Welled Up. I did find myself starting starting some tears my tear ducts were activated when um they were talking about being a mother and being a parent especially so that one is going in that category on mystic lake came out in 1999 this one is about a woman whose husband has told her that he is in love with a younger woman and so she is really having to reevaluate her life she's left by her husband and also by her daughter who has just gone off to college and so she moves back to her hometown and strikes up a friendship with a widow and the widow's young daughter she's able to connect with the daughter in ways that the father is not able to and so really forms a great relationship with these two people um, but also has these reminders of her past life and has to grapple with that. So, um, you know, I didn't like this one. <laughs> so I'm going to say dry eyes. Uh, it took me a bit to remember this one, but after I did look up the synopsis, I did remember it a little bit. So it's not like, did I even read this? But definitely dry eyes. I think I gave it a two star. Next up, coming out in 2000, we have Angel Falls. Uh, in this one, a couple is happily married and they are living on a horse farm. And when the wife gets injured, unfortunately, by the horses, uh, the husband is finding himself going back in his wife's history to try to help her heal. And uh, that involves going back to one of her previous loves, who is now a famous movie star, actor, whatever. And so he has to decide if he wants to bring this first love back into his wife's life so it could maybe help her heal or if he just wants to focus on their relationship. Um, I'm going to put it in Eyes Welled Up. I feel like it had some great messages about young love, first love, and how you've moved on from that in your life. Um, and also just like what you would do in a situation where you find yourself very very ill and um yeah I, I i don't know i found myself putting myself in their shoes and what i would do in this situation so i'm gonna put eyes welled up next up we have summer island this came out in 2001 unfortunately it's going to be put in did i even read this because when i read the synopsis i don't even remember reading the book at all. Um, it's about a struggling comedian and she is approached to write a tell-all biography about her mother who was once a famous actress. And uh, I found it a little shady, I think. Like she was getting all these ideas about her mom and going to publish them. But then there was this great relationship formed with the mother and daughter. So yeah, I don't even remember reading this. I don't remember how their relationship was reconciled. So yeah, that's gonna go there. Next up is Distant Shores. It came out in 2002. This one is about a couple with two grown daughters. Uh, the husband has accepted a new job that will kind of like jumpstart his career over again because he kind of messed up, I think, previously. And it forces them to move across the country. And the wife has decided not to go with him. Uh, because she wants to figure out who she is without her husband and her daughters because they're now grown. Um, this one is also going to go in, did I even read this? <laughs> this is looking poor right now for a tier ranking, but I don't remember it. It wasn't memorable. I could maybe put it in dry eyes, but again, I don't really remember the plot very well, so it's going to stay right there. No, 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 no. I'm going to put it up <laughs> because there are others on this list that deserve to be in did I even read this and I do remember reading it a little bit so it's gonna go in dry eyes <laughs> next up here's one that does deserve to go in did I even read this this is called between sisters it came out in 2003 uh 
I literally read the synopsis and was like, huh? So it says, an age-old rift between sisters has caused these two women to not be in contact until one of the sisters is getting married. And then they reunite after 20 years and trying to be the family that they never were. I don't remember it at all. I don't remember any twists or uh, reveals that were interesting. So yeah, that's going in. Did I even read this? Next up, we have The Things We Do For Love, which came out in 2004. And this one resonated with me. I really liked this one. Uh, it is about a woman whose relationship is kind of on a break. I think they did get divorced, but they're still in communication and missing each other almost. Anyway, uh, so she returns home to help her family restaurant. They run an Italian restaurant and she decides she wants to help out with that. Um, while working at this restaurant, she meets a young girl who has had it rough. She is raised by a single mother and this mother can't hold a job. She basically is providing for her mother and her mother struggles with addiction. So uh, the older woman kind of finds herself in a mentorship relationship with this younger girl and it's really, really sweet. They both do a lot of growth and I just love the way you can have a mentorship without actually having familial ties. So this one is going to go in Shed a Tear. I think I did cry. Um, it was a really good book. The next one is Kristen Hanna's Christmas book. Did you know she had a Christmas book? I didn't until learning about all of her backlist. This is called Comfort and Joy. It came out in 2005 and this is about a woman who is wanting to escape reality and so she buys a plane ticket to the middle of nowhere and uh, she finds that she's stuck in the middle of nowhere for reasons that I'm not going to tell you because it's a secret and she finds this resort that is run by a man, a recent widow, and his son. And she really comes to love them, uh, but then there's this, this twist that you don't see coming. <laughs> Everything isn't as it seems in this resort, and so uh, I'm going to put it in dry eyes. <laughs> While it was a memorable story, I didn't cry. Oh, maybe that's too brutal. I think I gave it four stars. Okay, we'll move it to eyes well done. Sure. Maybe just because of the twist that caught me off guard, it can go in the eyes well up category. Next up is Magic Hour. This came out in 2006. And this is unlike any Kristen Hanna I've read. I feel like they're normally women's fiction with romance and all that jazz. But this focuses on a young girl who shows up in the middle of nowhere, small town Seattle, and it seems like she's been living in the woods. She can't speak and she obviously has some trauma. So two sisters, one is a child psychologist and one is the town sheriff, they have to figure out who this girl is and what has happened to her. So I'm going to put this in Shed a Tear. Really loved it. And uh, again, it was unlike any Kristen Hanna I've read. It had this like suspense, almost thrillery aspect to it. And so going there, I also felt like there was a found family there with this young girl and these sisters and I really enjoyed that aspect. Next up we've got Firefly Lane. I feel like this is maybe one of Kristen Hanna's most popular just because it is now made into a Netflix series. I think it's Netflix. Anyway, this is about a friendship between two unlikely girls and we see this friendship form over 30 years of their lives. Um, yeah, their relationship falls apart comes back together and basically it is about how friends can hurt you but also heal you. Uh, I'm gonna put it in shed a tear. I definitely did cry at the end of this book but it wasn't like top tier bawled my eyes out left me thinking about it for days afterward. In 2009 Kristen Hanna came out with True Colors. This is about three sisters who are growing up in a small town. They're being raised by their single father and their mother has recently died. Uh, the youngest of the three sisters kind of gives up her good life and marries a new man in town who just happens to be Native American and people frown on their relationship, unfortunately, especially her dad. And so it's just like following these three sisters and the ramifications of that marriage that the youngest has with this gentleman. Also, we like jump forward in time and 
we see these characters fighting for freedom in a way that I'm not going to disclose. Uh, I'm gonna put this in Eyes Welled Up. I think I really liked this story and maybe gave it four stars, but I don't remember crying. Probably Eyes Welled Up in some ways just because of the sisterhood aspect. I have two sisters, so we're like the three sisters in this story. So I maybe found myself in these characters a little bit. So that's why it is going in that category. Next up, we have probably my all time favorite, Kristen Hanna. This is Winter Garden. It is easily going in Bald My Eyes Out. This is the first book I can remember where I literally just sobbed. I distinctly remember finishing it late in bed one night. My husband was already asleep and I was trying to softly sob because I was so sad at the end of this book. Um, this is about two daughters who have returned home. Their father is ill and they also need to take care of their mother. Their mother has never really been super motherly, super caring to them. She has this very hard exterior and it is their father's last wish for their mother to tell them her story and why she has turned out like this. And so then we hear the story and the mother decides to tell it in this fairy tale way and it's really beautiful but we find out that this mother has had a history in World War II Russia and man was it a tough tough life that she went through. So yeah that's where I'm gonna leave it. If you haven't read it I really recommend that you do. This is definitely one of my favorite Kristen Hanna books. Next up we have Night Road. This came out in 2011. This is a contemporary, kind of, mostly, um, and it's about a woman who has twin children, a boy and a girl, and in high school they meet this new girl in town and she becomes best friends with the girl twin and then starts dating the boy twin and then these three uh, get in an accident, a car accident, and the mother the mother's life has changed. Uh, she has to try to reconcile what happened in the accident, but also be a mother in the process. And she really blames this new girl, even when it might not be this new girl's fault. We also jump forward in time in this one. And many years later, the accident still looms over these people's lives. And uh, yeah, it was good. I think I gave it five stars, but I don't remember sobbing so I'm gonna put it in shed a tear because I definitely think I cried it just wasn't like <laughs> the ugly cry <laughs> that I've gotten with only one book so far on this list next up we have Homefront which came out in 2012 this is one of Kristen Hanna's first war story books um she just recently came out with the war story book that's why I say that but this is about a husband and wife. They have two young children and the husband is a lawyer who is working constantly and the wife works in like the National Guard so she's never gone to active battle. However, she is called to duty and is deployed to Iraq. Uh, so we get her time while she's there. This father has to learn how to single parent his two girls while he is super busy with his job and then she comes back completely changed physically mentally emotionally as one is by war and so we get that we see how their relationships have changed how they must adapt and I liked it I think I gave it like three three and a half stars I don't know if I ever cried so we'll just put it in eyes welled up because there were some really hard-hitting moments and what I loved about this book is Kristen Hanna wrote an uh, author's note at the end that said, if we are going to ask people to fight for our country, we need to make sure that when they come back to our country, we are supporting them in the ways that they need, whether that's mentally, especially with PTSD or in any other way. So um, yeah, loved that message. In 2013, Kristen Hanna came out with a sequel to Firefly Lane, and it is called Fly Away. And Kristen Hanna has said herself that this book should really never have been written. She was kind of in a rut. She wanted to write something else but didn't feel like it was the time and so she went back to Tully and Kate in Firefly Lane and wrote this sequel. Um, I actually enjoyed the sequel because 
we return to these characters that I really loved. Um, but I definitely don't think I cried. Uh, I'll put it in Eyes Welled Up. Um, it was nice, again, to return to these characters that I really liked in Firefly Lane. But, um, yeah, maybe just not necessary. <laughs> but still good because it's Kristen Hanna and I love her writing. Okay, we are getting to some good ones, her most recent releases. Here we have The Nightingale. This came out in 2015. This is a World War II book set in France. It is about two sisters who are trying to help the war effort in the way that they know how. And holy smokes, it's so good. I am gonna put it in Bald My Eyes Out because I think I did indeed cry a bunch. And one thing though I'm realizing, like. I remember this story, but I don't think I remember how good it is. So I'm actually wanting to go back and read it because mm, it's got to be good. I mean, it is good. I know it, but I want to reread it and fully enjoy it again for what it was to me when I read it the first time. Uh, also, I think a movie is coming out soon with the Fanning sisters playing these two sisters. And uh, so I should reread it before I watch that movie. Next up. Another hard hitter, we've got The Great Alone. This came out in 2018. This is about a family who moves to a very isolated town in Alaska. The husband has come back from Vietnam. He was a prisoner of war, and so he is obviously struggling with that experience and having PTSD, and he just decides the best way to deal with this is go to the middle of nowhere with his family. So he takes his wife and his young daughter, and they move to Alaska. Um, this family is obviously fighting the elements in Alaska because it's cold and isolated, but then also realizing that they are fighting internally in this family too because the father is really struggling mentally with uh, his time in Vietnam. So uh, I loved this book. I'm going to put it in Bald My Eyes Out because I definitely cried and um, I just feel like it has another great message about getting the help that is needed when someone goes through trauma and um, also what this wife and daughter had to do in order to thrive in their life. So yes, great book. Next, we've got The Four Winds. This is one that I think people didn't enjoy as much. I still liked it. I liked the story and enjoyed our characters. This came out in 2021. It is one of her historical fiction books. Uh, this follows a woman during the Dust Bowl in Texas and she has a family, can't provide for her family, so she decides to move west to California, hoping, as many did during that time, that they could find a job and support their family. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna leave it at that because there gets to be some interesting things once they're in California, but you'll have to read it to figure that out. Uh, I'm gonna put this in Shed a Tear. It was, it was really good, um, but I think I gave it four stars. Again, wasn't my favorite of Kristen Hanna's, but still really enjoyed it. And now we are on to the most recent release. When this video is coming out, this book just was released last week. And uh, this is The Women. It is about the women who fought in Vietnam, and it's phenomenal. We follow one woman in particular who serves in Vietnam in the Army Nurse Corps, and we follow her time in Vietnam, but then also when she comes back to the United States. Um, it's really sad seeing how women and all vets were treated when they came back from Vietnam. Um, but I love that Kristen Hanna brought that to light again. Uh, it is so phenomenal. I cried at least four, maybe five times in this book. So I'm putting it in bald my eyes out. It could possibly go against Winter Garden as one of my favorite Kristen Hanna books. I don't know. Maybe it's just the hype of the new release, but I really, really loved it. Uh, yeah. So these are the final standings. I feel good about this. I'm so proud of myself that I have become a completionist in Kristen Hanna's books. I love her. I will continue to read whatever she releases. Uh, and I encourage you to try some of her books, especially these top tier, bald my eyes out books. <laughs> anyway, let me know if you have read any Kristen Hanna and what your favorite is of hers. I would love to have some bookish conversation with you down below in the comments. Thank you so much for watching this video. Like it on your way out. Consider subscribing to my channel if you want to see more bookish and bullet journaling content from me. And I will see you in the next one. Bye!